And we welcome to the program now the Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Mississippi, Delbert Hoseman. Good to see you there, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, George. It's a good day in Mississippi. A great day. Pretty day coming up. Yeah. The season's starting, and uh, most of the farmers I've been running through the Delta, most of the farmers are having good crop years. Diesel's too expensive, and their inputs are expensive, but they had good crops, so they're having a, it's a pretty good time of the year. What are they telling you about the drought? It affect now so many of our farmers are irrigating. Yeah. So it's only affecting the non-irrigating land, which is significant, but still um, most of many of them I was talking to one in Rolling Fork yesterday is most of them have irrigated land and some dry what they call dry land. The dry land obviously had uh, had had less than the normal uh, soybean production, but but other than that, most of our irrigated stuff, it just costs a little bit more money to put water on them, and that's where the diesel cost comes in. Yeah, I was over in Smith County a couple of months ago. It was um, late August, and they were talking about having to put the hay out a little early, and they're a little concerned about their supply of that uh, for the cattle. They're already – I talked to one of our, our cattle farmers, I guess, in the last 24, 48 hours. He's already hauling hay in. Yeah. I mean, they're, 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 everything's dry, and there's, there's nothing for the – as my children refer to it, the moo cows, there's nothing <laughs> for the cows to eat. And they're, so they're already hauling hay in right now. And yeah. unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's going to break. Uh, we may get some rain here this Friday, but yeah. I don't think that's going to cure where we are. Yeah, I agree. I know the river's low as well, but uh, that's the hand that's been dealt us, and, and we'll work through it. So good to see you last night. You had a great event. And uh, I know you did some interviewing with uh, the media that was on hand as well. Got to be a relief. This thing's uh, over. I know your your primary was quite uh, contentious, and you were able uh, to prevail there and, and advance to the general, but uh, really uh, handled that with ease. Oh, we were we were real pleased. Uh, you know, I, I forget sixty one or sixty two percent of the vote and. A huge vote to count. Uh, over four hundred thousand people uh, honored us with their vote yesterday, and uh, I was real pleased with that. And um, I think, really, a jar to be honest about it, this is a validation of really what the legislature has been doing. If you really want to look at it, I, uh, you know, I don't vote in the le- I name the committees and allocate the bills, but I've never had to vote in the last four years on a matter. I only vote unless there's a tie. Yeah. So the mem- the Senate members took on everything uh, from education to flag, from uh, infrastructure to tax cuts. Uh, you-, you just look down the laundry list, and for that, uh, I believe just about all but one senator returned that wanted to return. Hmm. Uh, the people just looked at uh, – le- and I can't speak for the House. I'm not sure about the numbers, but I assume they're similar – but on the Senate side, our, our men and women just took on every every issue and reached some kind of conclusion. And um, we're we're our financial condition is good, and we've we've got a rainy day fund full, and uh, we're doing new projects on roads, and people are just satisfied with um, what's been going on. And I, I I think my my numbers really reflect more what my Senate did than they do. One thing that Rhino and I were looking at uh, in the last segment, Lieutenant Governor, was uh, based on the numbers today, 96 percent total aggregate ballots accounted for, uh, according to the AP, that once we get to 100 percent, we're going to fall about 70,000 ballots short of the total number cast in 2019. What do you think about that? I worried about that. A lot of the last week of the campaign, I, I started talking about the fact that uh, the Mississippi National Guard had invited me for the third time to go back to Germany and Kuwait about six or eight weeks ago, and I did that. And I had been over there with them in 2008 in Afghanistan and Iraq and Kuwait, and I went back in 18, and then I went back six weeks ago. And I talked about how we have thousands, literally, of Mississippians that are um, – somewhere between Egypt and Turkey, and in harm's way every day, and how important it was they were defending our freedoms and we needed to go cast a ballot. And I was disappointed. Um, you know, I, 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 would, I thought that we should have exceeded 800,000 votes 
Uh, we're just coming close to that, but I don't yeah. think we are going to exceed that. And um, to me, um, it, it's one or two or three things maybe going on. One, everything's going so good that people aren't mad enough or, <laughs> to go vote. No, they're all satisfied, and, and their guy's going to win, or their girl's going to get reelected, lady's going to get reelected. So they're really uh, they're satisfied. So they're not fired up to go cast a ballot. Uh, the other is just, uh, in many cases, a, a general malaise about the election system. Uh, some of that is national, uh, when you see what's going on with our president, our former president, and uh, just the bitter fights in Congress, and people are mad. They're mad we don't have a border anymore. Uh, I mean, you just go down the line. Yeah. And so they're mad. And so with that, I think that taints sometimes, even though we don't have anything to do with that, um, it taints us sometimes, and it taints the whole political environment sometimes when people don't think that their country is being managed in in one direction or the other, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that it's just, uh, you know, weeks and weeks without a speaker. Uh, everything is exceptionally partisan. Um, uh, you know, without uh, uh, the current president being investigated, the former president uh, being charged with one thing or another, and people just... And we got people coming across the border like there's nothing there but the small river. Mm-hmm. So I, I just I, I think people uh, are disenchanted with yeah. the political atmosphere. So yeah, well, seems like I, I I just checked again just to make sure we got the math right for our audience. It looks like based on the present the vote count and the percent of votes that uh, the AP says have uh, been accounted for, it looks like we'll land at about 820,000, and that'd be some 50,000 short of the last cycle. But that's still significant, 50,000 is. It um, is significant, and, that, and uh, you know, that's about 5 or 6% yep. decrease in, in population. And I think it's for two reasons. One, that people are satisfied uh, that we're addressing education and the things that and roads and bridges and, and jobs, and we're addressing the things they have uh, concerns about. And the second is the fact that uh, every time they turn on the, the TV, if they're watching CNN, they're impeaching one guy, and <laughs> if they're watching Fox, they're impeaching another guy. That's so right. It, so there's really no relief uh, from whatever's going on in Washington. Let's pivot to uh, the, the coming session and the coming term. I, I've uh, seen you speak uh, multiple times, and, and you have have stated that a high priority is to make community college tuition-free in the state of Mississippi. Uh, help us out. Tell us about that. Yeah, I, I had been studying that a year before, but we did a large tax cut, as you remember. We're, I think we're about the fifth lowest tax state now that t- charges taxes. So we did the large tax cut, and I, I couldn't get to it this last year. But it had been in my planning to go forward with the last dollar tuition. So that means uh, a young man or woman that wants, that's coming out of school um, will be able to get their Pell Grant or whatever grants they've got coming. And whatever the gap is, the state will pay. And uh, those project out to be between 25 and $30 million a year to cover that last dollar tuition part. And many of our, about five, I think, of our community colleges are, are there already or where they're allowing somewhat close to tuition-free. And so this will allow them to pay books and maybe some other things or maybe some infant care uh, for uh, single moms or dads that, that, that want to go back to school. So there, there's a whole lot of uh, possibilities here to expand that. When I looked at Tennessee, Gerard, they, they had about a 40% increase in their community college hmm. participation. I don't know that we'll hit that here in our state because we've got such good community college systems now and people are taking dual credits uh, to go to college anyway. But this is part of my overall plan. We, we, we've covered public pre-K. We've got about 6,000 children in public pre-K now, um, which, you know, if you want to go to parochial or Head Start, all that's fine, but I, I wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to get started in pre-K. Yeah. You see what, what Governor Bryan and Tate Reeves and others did with the third grade reading gate. You look how, how far we've come with the scores to be, you know, 31st and 23rd in, in the country versus 50th. And now the next logical step was to get career coaches. Now, we did that two years ago. And now this year we had 80, then we went to 140. Now we'll have 200 career coaches in every school in Mississippi, hopefully. Yeah. Those are paid for by the state, not the school district. And they sit down with every junior and senior and map their their economic future. You know, I want to be 
uh, a welder, and this is all right. This is what you need to do. And if you go one more year to uh, Jones County uh, Community College, you can get your certificate, and you'll make you know seventy five thousand dollars a year or eighty, whatever the number is. Good to have so, a plan, and that's what they need. Is. Yeah. And every one of these career coaches, I had five of them up in New Albany give a talk uh, that I was at, and I mean, two of them started crying. Wow. They become like that's awesome. Uh, older uncles or aunts or something with these yeah. children. And then the next step is to allow them to go tuition-free. So gotcha. we'll cover the gamut from pre-K all the way to two years of community college, and we're going to have people with a better economic future, and we're going to have a better uh, workforce development. we got to go. We appreciate you joining us, Lieutenant Governor. I know we'll be talking some more about all that. Thanks a lot, sir. Appreciate it. Good to talk to you. Have a great day. You too, man. We're coming right back.